Welcome to Winning the Rig Game. As always, this is not investing advice. This is just a way to share my ideas and thoughts about the market. Okay, let's get into this. The 4680 battery teardown. Jordan from the limiting factor got a battery, a production battery from Monroe and Associates and did the same chemical breakdown with the help of Shirley Mung and a university in California to determine what's going on with the 4680 batteries. The truth is I watched that episode with the limiting factor and I was immediately depressed. Man, was I disappointed and I still am. Why? Well, with battery day, I expected so much more and the truth is we didn't get it. We were expecting much greater power density and just a, an overall better, more powerful battery. Didn't get it. We did find out that they're really not using silicon in the, in the batteries in, at this time. So those are some of the advances that they have to do. Uh, silicon allows for greater power density. Uh, it also expands greatly, so it can cause cracking and other problems. So basically, the 4680s currently produced are about on par with the 2170 batteries. Jordan does an excellent job going through the numbers, and I, I have a couple of screenshots that I'll put on there. But you should definitely watch the limiting factors video, and the upcoming video is gonna be amazing, in which he's gonna be comparing the 2170s, 4680s, 80s and some of the other batteries, maybe the Kirin battery from CATL. Another disappointment with the 4680s has been the slow ramp up. This has been a real problem and it seems like Tesla is getting it done, but there was a lot of things going into this. If you remember Tesla in 2019, which was the reason I first invested in Tesla, they bought Maxwell Technologies and their dry cell battery formulation and processes. The truth is the Chinese tried to buy that company and it was blocked by the Trump administration. Thank God for that one. As a result, Tesla ended up buying them and they bought them for stock. It was a great buy. Well, up until recently, probably a great buy, a great deal for the, the people at Maxwell. They got Tesla shares and wrote it all the way up uh, from 2019. I mean, it's come down a bit, but man, that was a that was a steal. And it was a good deal for Tesla. It's taken Tesla basically three years to start incorporating that. And battery day was mind blowing. Of course, Wall Street didn't get it. It was highly complex. And the truth is lithium batteries, it's all very nuanced and very, eh, very difficult to understand. Uh, there's a lot of things you sort of have to know and there are some channels that are phenomenal limiting factor unbelievable the tesla economist He's been on point talking about the importance of 4680 batteries. John from the Cleaner Watt and of course Monroe and Associates. These guys are the best. We're getting such good information from them regarding the 4680s. Okay, we had a slow ramp up. The Model Y coming out of Austin was supposed to be 4680s. Well, they cut back over to the 2170s. That was very concerning. Some of the crap that's going on now with Tesla stock, that's BS. It's all FUD, and it's driven by the financial media and enemies of Elon and whatever other people want to see Tesla price go down. And it's working. It is absolutely working right now. But the truth is, most of the stuff that's in the media, the FUD, the BS, is meaningless. The 4680s, that is something that is significant. And when they rolled back to the 2170s, yeah, that was, that was a point of concern. They've been able to speed up production and get things going or get back on track. At least it seems that way. They're still bringing in equipment into Tesla Giga, Giga Factory Austin. That's a good sign. All the reports we're getting from these, these people like Cleaner Watt and Limiting Factor and, and Dylan from Electrified, we get some great information. And everything we're hearing is it's getting there. It's improving. The dry cell process has been a real problem. Another company that Tesla bought was Hyler in Canada. And that was a battery manufacturing equipment maker. And of course, they have Groman and Associates, uh, which was one of their first acquisitions and that was a robotics manufacturing company. So Tesla spent a great deal of time working on the manufacturing pro uh, processes and they'll solve this, they'll get this down. Now, one of the big surprises on the teardown was the power density. It was basically the same as the 2170, but the 2170 is used in silicon and the 4680s right now isn't. So when the 4680s are able to start using silicon in the cathode and anode, things will improve. The power density and all these steps that they're learning 
as they go and continue to improve, the batteries will eventually achieve what Elon and Drew were talking about at Battery Day. I would love to see a Battery Day too. I have a ton of unanswered questions. So if the 2170s and the 4680 batteries are basically delivering the same power density, why, why go through the headaches of switching over to the 4680? Well, it's still worth it. Even if they were just the same power density, it comes down to speed of production. The speed of production, because the 4680 batteries are larger in form factor, they'll be able to reduce the cost and speed up production. Some of the other things, the tabless design, that's huge for being able to scale up production. The dry cell process, again, they don't need to cook a film that becomes the jelly roll in the batteries. So they can reduce the size and the time to make the batteries. Now we don't know what some of the other battery makers that are also gonna make 4680 form factors, such as Panasonic. They're gonna be building their own version of the 4680. They might not use the dry cell process and we're gonna have to see what comes with that. But it's all very interesting and uh, still worth doing. We don't know right now what the charging speeds are gonna be, but potentially we think they're gonna be faster, especially because of the tabless design. Right now, I don't think we really have that information, but we'll have to wait and see. Keep watching the limiting factor. We're gonna get more and more information from him and Cleaner Watt and all the others. Now, one of my questions is, are we ever gonna see the 4680 using a different battery chemistry? Right now, the 4680s, high nickel batteries. So they're usually more expensive, but because of the speed of production, they'll be able to get them down. There are other advantages with lithium iron phosphate batteries versus high nickel batteries. Life cycle, uh, longevity of the battery, the ability to charge to 100% without damaging the battery. There's a lot of advantages with the lithium iron battery versus the high nickel batteries. There are also two different lithium sources, generally speaking. High nickel batteries require spodumene and come from hard rock. That's usually from Australia. 80 plus percent of the lithium is refined in China and then shipped to Japan, Korea, and wherever else in, within China for use in batteries. With lithium iron phosphate batteries, that generally comes from brine, lithium carbonate. And like I said, there's advantages. If you're using batteries for energy storage, hands down, it makes the most sense to use lithium iron phosphate batteries. You're not lugging it around. And the power density, you can just build bigger battery storage. But when it comes to cars, you need, at least for American standards, in China, it's they use lithium iron. And in Europe, they might be able to get away with lithium iron. In the United States, the people require greater ranges, generally speaking. Another thing we're seeing is Tesla using other battery manufacturers. They can't get enough lithium. They can't make enough batteries. So they partnered with Panasonic and CATL and others. LG, they're, they're getting batteries from whoever and wherever they can. CATL has a very interesting battery, the Kirin battery. And that's a lithium iron blade battery. And the power density is pretty good for lithium iron. And it's actually being used in cars and producing pretty good ranges. Remember, Tesla has one of the most powerful or energy efficient powertrains. They have advantages over other car makers. They can probably get away with using lithium iron phosphate batteries that don't have the power density and don't have the range because they're able to squeeze more range out of their cars. So that's a huge advantage. I'm still hoping that we get a battery day and get more information from Tesla because boy, they've been hiding a lot of information and we all have a ton of questions. It makes it important to understand what they're doing for our ability to value the company and, and place our bets on, on the company. I'm very confident in Tesla and their future plans for the batteries. Everything they're doing seems positive. They're building cathode plants, probably at all the factories, but right now we know Texas is coming along very well. They're also getting into refining of lithium. They're gonna be producing their own batteries. All this is very positive and they're building their own equipment. That's why they bought these companies. Nobody else is gonna be, be able to compete with them on the cost of battery manufacturing. And as a result, they'll be able to get better prices from their partners because they're selling. But if Ford and some of the other companies can buy the same battery as Tesla from CATL or a better battery than, than Tesla is producing, that takes away a huge competitive 
advantage for Tesla. We really got to keep an eye on what's going on with Tesla and their battery manufacturing. The range is a big deal. Cost of production is a big deal. Part of the problem with these other car companies, they can't make a car, an electric car, with even close to the margins that Tesla can. And that's only going to improve as Tesla is able to ramp up and scale up production to a massive amount. Elon's supposed to be working on, currently distracted by working at Twitter, but he has his master plan three. And that's all about scale of production. We're going to have to produce a ton of batteries. And right now, there's not enough lithium. That's why I'm still very bullish on lithium. Yesterday, I had to sell my lack calls and my Tesla calls for December. I lost. I mean, this market's just eating people alive. And I was like Muhammad Ali doing rope a dope as long as I could. But the truth is, the clock was ticking. Time decay was working against me. And I had to make some tough decisions. It sucks. I hate it. But that's part of the game, especially with the options. I held on to my Tesla stock and I continue to add to it. I usually sell options and this time I tried to hold on to them so I could execute them. It didn't work out that well. I might have to go back to my original plan of just selling options when I make a profit and then use those profits to buy Tesla shares. I'm still thinking about it and I have to see what happens. Anyway, that one's on me and you're not going to win every game. That's just the way it is. So we watched the Joe Tegmeyer videos, and he does a great job, especially getting those inside views to see about the giga presses and, and the, the battery production. It's amazing being able to have this source of information. And you really got to watch these videos and stay on top of things in order to understand what's working and what's not with Tesla. Forget about CNBC. Forget about those clowns on Wall Street who are pumping and dumping and trying to move their stock in whatever way they want to move it. They all got agendas. We're in it for the long term for years. And we know that what they're doing is amazing. And in time, things are going to work out very well if you own the shares. At least that's my opinion. And that's why I'm buying Tesla stock. Okay, let's also talk about the IRA, Inflation Reduction Act. That passed. And as a result of that, it's going to be a huge advantage for Tesla. Tesla is making batteries. Tesla has battery deals with Panasonic. And from what I understand, that deal with Panasonic, Tesla would be eligible, at least in part, for tax benefits or advantages for producing batteries in the United States and assembling them in packs. In total, Tesla is going to be able to, we think, reduce or have a savings of about $3,000 per car. That's a huge benefit that's going to go straight to the bottom line. The truth is, I think this, this act was poorly planned. And there is no way the U.S. government is going to be able to afford this in time. Will it spur EV adoption? 100%. It's, it's going to be a huge benefit and be able to reduce the cost of, of the cars or, or the profit margins or a combination of both, whatever Tesla ends up deciding to do. But Tesla is vertically integrated and making the batteries. So huge benefit that a lot of other car makers who are just buying the batteries won't have. Another positive for Tesla. To wrap up, the 4680 batteries, the teardown by Jordan at the limited factor was a little bit like Christmas Day and you're hoping to get a Red Ryder BB gun and you end up getting a sweater. In time, you start to appreciate what actually happened. And the good news that we should be focusing on is Tesla is starting production or ramping up production of the 4680s. The speed of production is key for lowering the cost. The range, the power density, all the other benefits that Elon and Drew talked about at Battery Day, I'm sure will come. I guess, I guess my expectations were too high. Tesla's on track. I'm highly confident about the batteries. I just wish Tesla would buy a, lith a lithium miner. I still see that as a, an extreme risk for Tesla. And I don't own any black shares. I would, but because of the wash rule, I have to wait. Please hit the bell, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of Tesla's plans and what they're doing. Were you disappointed? All right, everyone. Thanks for watching.